The Ebola virus was first recognized in 1976 after two near simultaneous outbreaks in Sudan and the former Zaire. The bug was named after a small river in the northwest of what is now the Democratic Republic of Congo. The virus has an unusual shape. It's very long and thin compared to others. But despite the devastating impact of the virus, it's genetically very simple. Its single strand of RNA contains only seven genes. Fruit bats are thought to be the main reservoir of the virus in the wild. Humans can get the infection from them or from other animals, such as infected monkeys and apes commonly killed for bushmeat. Humans then spread the virus from person to person, often leading to rapid and devastating outbreaks. So how do people get infected? Well, the Ebola virus is found in the skin, organs and body fluids of infected people and animals, even when they're dead. As we have seen, handling dead bodies is particularly risky. The virus gets into the body through cuts and scrapes on the skin or through mucosal membranes in places like the eyes, mouth, nose and throat, or through jabs from contaminated needles. Once inside, the virus quickly infects immune cells in the body known as monocytes, macrophages and dendritic cells. These spread the infection around the body, through the bloodstream and probably the lymphatic system as well. The incubation period of the virus is 2 to 21 days. Then people start to show extreme flu-like symptoms, a sudden onset of fever, chills, muscle pain, alongside diarrhea, nausea and vomiting. Easily confused with other more common African diseases such as malaria, typhoid and Lassa fever. Because of this, at the start of an outbreak, patients are often misdiagnosed. Now established inside the body, the Ebola virus targets the liver and adrenal glands. Liver tissue is destroyed, affecting the production of proteins that help blood to clot. Damage to the adrenal glands, which sit on top of the kidneys, harm the body's production of steroids, which are necessary to control normal blood pressure. The most deadly aspect of Ebola infection is a dramatic overreaction of the immune system. This cytokine storm is a massive mobilization of the body's defenses to wipe out the virus. It's this that often kills people. The linings of the blood vessels become more permeable, leading to dehydration, low blood pressure and shock. In some cases, people hemorrhage and suffer internal and external bleeding. The cause of death is multiple organ failure. So what are the chances of survival? In more than 20 past outbreaks, Ebola has killed between 25 and 90% of people infected. In West Africa in 2014, the death rate reached 70%. But for all we do know about this simple and deadly virus, what is unclear is how we stop the largest outbreak the world has ever seen.